So I think that a lot of Bernie Sanders supporters knew that the calls for him to drop out would become, you know, increasingly vocal as the primary went on. But I mean, the Democratic Party primary process has effectively been paused because of this global pandemic. States are postponing their primaries. We still have half of the states who need to vote. Um, so, you know, it was important for Bernie Sanders, I thought, to resist those external calls for him to drop out because they were always going to call for him to drop out. The media, uh, political operatives in D.C., the Democratic Party establishment and their loyalists, they were always going to call for him to drop out as early as it was convenient to do so. But one thing that I didn't necessarily anticipate were for people closest to Bernie Sanders, his literal team, to start putting pressure on him to drop out when more than half the country hasn't voted yet. Now, do I think that this race is going to change? No. Most likely, Joe Biden is going to win. However, I am very, very much committed to this principle known as democracy, to where even if we know what the result will be, those of us who haven't voted yet, we should be allowed to exercise our right to vote, make our voices heard. Like my niece, who is finally old enough to vote, hasn't had the opportunity to vote for the very first time for someone who she is very enthusiastic to vote for, Bernie Sanders. So it doesn't matter if this is already a foregone conclusion to a lot of people, at least let the rest of the states go and make their voices heard. But now it's gotten so bad that people in Bernie Sanders' team are saying, all right, bud, it's time to call it quits, including his own campaign manager, Faz Shakir. So as Sean Sullivan of the Washington Post reports, a small group of Bernie Sanders top aides and allies, including his campaign manager and his longtime strategist, have encouraged the independent senator from Vermont to consider withdrawing from the presidential race, according to two people with knowledge of the situation. The group includes campaign manager Faz Shakir and Representative Pramila Jayapal, a top Sanders surrogate and ally, according to the people who spoke on the condition of anonymity to describe sensitive private discussions. Sanders himself has become more open to the prospect of dropping out, according to one of the people with knowledge of the situation and another close ally, especially if he suffers a significant defeat in Tuesday's Wisconsin primary, which polls suggest Joe Biden will win handily. Beyond Shakir and Jayapal, longtime strategist Jeff Weaver has privately made a case that exiting the race more quickly and on good terms with Biden would give Sanders more leverage in the long run. That's a joke, according to one of the people. The other said Weaver has used a light touch in presenting his case. Weaver and Jayapal did not return calls and messages seeking comment. Shakir declined to comment. Sanders has not made a final decision, the people said, and other close allies have privately urged him to keep running, such as national campaign co-chair Nina Turner, while representing Representative Rashida Tlaib is also said to favor him remaining in the race. Larry Cohen, a longtime ally who chairs a nonprofit aligned with Sanders, is waging a public campaign for him to stay in until the Democratic National Convention. The Sanders campaign declined to comment on internal deliberations. Wow. So this story is uh, very depressing, to say the least. Oh, and um, Larry David is also calling on him to uh, drop out. And he says, everyone must support Joe Biden. So obviously, you know, I have a lot to say about this. I think that it is uh, not the right thing to do. I've made my case in a different video as to what the benefits are for Bernie Sanders to stay in. I think that for Jeff Weaver to suggest that him dropping out will give him more leverage is delusional. And we should never take Jeff Weaver seriously again with anything he says if he genuinely believes that. But look, you can tell that people closest to Bernie Sanders, they've already checked out. They have already checked out. Faz Shakir, he's already checked out. Because here's the thing. After Super Tuesday, the race was entirely different. The race was entirely different. Bernie Sanders was the front runner, And after Nevada, he didn't really need to change anything. He just needed to continue on with that momentum. But when the entire establishment coalesced around Biden because of Obama... That was a new race, and Bernie Sanders needed to adapt, and he never adapted. Now, part of that is Bernie Sanders' fault. Yes, I admit that. But it's also part of his team 
who's failing to adapt. I'm not including Brianna Joy Gray in this discussion. I think she's doing phenomenal. I'm not including David Sirota. I think he's doing phenomenal. There's a lot of people around Bernie Sanders that are great and they're ride or die. And they should be if you're part of a campaign because you shouldn't be in that campaign if it's just a job to you. Like you should actually believe in what you are campaigning for. Otherwise, what's the point? If, if this is just a job to you, I mean, what's the point? So, you know, after Super Tuesday, to get back to that point, Bernie needed to adapt, and he never adapted. He needed to hit Joe Biden and hit Joe Biden hard. But if anything, he did more damage in saying that he thinks Joe Biden can beat Donald Trump. Now, there was reason to believe that maybe Bernie Sanders didn't necessarily have to change up the strategy because the deck was reshuffled, so to speak, once we all found ourselves in the midst of this global pandemic. Maybe Bernie Sanders just needed to wait it out. Maybe people would realize that all the policies Bernie was campaigning on were the right antidote to the issues that we're facing currently, except that's not happening. They're not any more inclined to vote for Bernie Sanders. It doesn't matter that voters in every single state, a majority of them, say they support Medicare for all. This was about electability. And COVID-19, this hasn't changed that calculus. This hasn't changed their thinking. And because of that, you have to change up the strategy. And it's very clear that Bernie Sanders hasn't changed up the strategy at all. So by remaining in the race, just doing nothing, I think it has its benefits. But it's very clear that Bernie's aggregate team, they don't seem to be playing to win currently, based on my estimation. Now, I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't talk to anyone from within the campaign. I don't, you know, I don't know what's happening internally, but they're not playing to win. Like, what are you doing now? You should still be campaigning. You should be hitting Joe Biden because he's very clearly incompetent. You see Democratic Party voters already looking, you know, uh, at Andrew Cuomo as the next president. You had President Cuomo trending. Like, you have to capitalize on these opportunities that present themselves to you. Show people why you're the real leader that's needed at this time. And Bernie's team just never adapted. Now, Bernie Sanders, I've said, is, you know, um, he's just too nice. So I don't think he's going to hit Biden in the way that he needs to, to be successful, to run a successful campaign. But if you can't adapt, then what do you expect? What do you expect? You're just going to lose. And that sucks to say. The thought of him dropping out is incredibly depressing. But I mean, what they're doing now, his campaign, what are they doing? Like, that's the question. What are they doing? Are they even playing to win currently? How are you not making a stronger case for Medicare for All? I get that the media is going to attack you, but they're going to attack you no matter what. You're never going to win over Democratic Party loyalists until you absolutely roll over and die and pledge loyalty to them, right? So... No matter what you do, they're going to attack you and say that you and your supporters are divisive, so at least campaign like you want to win. But I mean, it's clear that people like Fahad Shakir, they're not doing jack shit currently. And now they're pressuring Bernie Sanders to drop out. So, I mean, what what was it? Like, that's my question to people like Fahad Shakir. Were you just in this because you thought he was going to win and you wanted a position in his administration? I'm asking earnestly. Like, I'm not trying to be condescending. I'm asking, like, did you not care about the policies that Bernie was campaigning on? Medicare for all? Student debt cancellation? Because I think at the end of the day, you really have to understand the reality of D.C. There are people who are political opportunists who aren't necessarily in this because they believe in the things that Bernie's talking about. They're in this for a paycheck. Look at Simone Sanders. She worked for Bernie in 2016, and now she's working with Joe Biden. I mean, imagine flipping from Bernie to Joe Biden. That's insane. So there's a lot of people who don't actually believe in anything. They just want to get a job. And unfortunately, there seems to be a large portion of people, you know, around Bernie Sanders that they don't want to ruffle any feathers. They don't want to actually fight because they know that, you know, in D.C., if you don't play by the rules of the establishment, your livelihood will be threatened. I mean, look at last week when Brianna Joy Gray called out Kamala Harris for not supporting Medicare for All. 
One of the first things that people like Bakari Sellers threatened her with was not being able to find another job in D.C. So, you know, if you're Faz Shakir and you're the campaign manager for Bernie Sanders and everyone in the establishment wants you to drop out, he's probably thinking in a self-interested way right now, wondering, you know, is it best for me in the future if I pressure Bernie to drop out so it looks like, you know, I'm willing to comply with the demands of the establishment so I can get a job again? I mean, I don't know. It's just... This election, um, it's really revealing that we really don't have any real allies. Like, the left is on its own. You can't really align with centrists and Democratic Party people, you know, the, the loyalists in particular, because they don't actually care about anything. You obviously can't align with Republicans because they are a capitalist-worshipping death cult. So, all we have is ourselves. The left is on its own, and they are abandoned. They don't have a political party. They don't have a home in D.C. So people who actually care about policies like Medicare for All, they're left just stranded. Who's going to pick up the mantle after Bernie Sanders is gone? I mean, nobody. Like, what we need, ideally, is, like, a left equivalent of Donald Trump or a wing of the Democratic Party who's willing to emulate the harsh tactics of the Tea Party. But, you know, everyone is too nice or too afraid to insult the Democratic Party establishment and we're in this fucked up situation to where, you know, the Democratic Party establishment says jump and progressives who are concerned with their own, you know, career prospects, say how high, because I definitely don't want to be marginalized in this town of D.C. Um, look, how about this? If I were Bernie Sanders, this is what I would do. I would say anyone who believes in Medicare for All, who believes in a Green New Deal, you can stay. Anyone who was never a true believer, you can go. We don't need you, and we certainly don't want you. Because, you know, it's clear that you don't want to win anyway. Like, you've already given up after Super Tuesday because we haven't shifted the strategy. Bernie hasn't either. But if I were Bernie, I would say now, going forward, this is a new campaign. We're going to reset and relaunch our campaign. Now, we're going to hammer Joe Biden because we're already getting pre-blamed with his loss in November if he does, in fact, lose. So we have nothing to lose. We're already the scapegoat regardless of the outcome. So we're going to hit him. We're going to show voters now that we have this opportunity to show people why Medicare for All is needed. We're going to hit him hard because he is not capable of winning. He's going to lose to Donald Trump. No, I don't think he's electable. I said that to be nice. No, I don't think he's looking out for voters because he said he'd veto Medicare for All, which means he doesn't care about this life-saving policy. Voters could die, and that doesn't matter to Joe Biden. So I have to remain in the race. I have a moral obligation to keep fighting because there's nobody else who's willing to step up and fight for all of these people that the Democratic Party abandoned. Will Bernie Sanders do that? No, because Bernie Sanders is too nice. And, um... I don't say that as a compliment to Bernie Sanders. Before, I said it as a compliment, but now it's like, look, if you have all these people who aren't willing to fight, then you have to go rogue and just run your own campaign. But Bernie's not capitalizing on this opportunity. He's not changing his campaign at all. So you can't not change anything and expect the trajectory of this race to change at all. It's, it's going to remain static. It's going to remain the same. If things continue as they are now, Joe Biden will be the Democratic Party nominee and he will go into the convention with a majority. So you have time to stop this. You have a global pandemic that you can use to demonstrate how crucial policies like Medicare for All and rent control are. But Bernie isn't doing that. And he's probably just afraid to go after the Democratic Party establishment because he sees how powerful they are. So at the end of the day, uh, the left is forced to fight on their own because nobody is strong enough. Nobody uh, is willing to set aside self-interest and fight for the people because they're all worried about their own asses and that or they're just not strong enough to fight. Bernie just isn't strong enough to fight. It's depressing. It's sad. 
But I mean, what are you going to do? This is the reality that we are faced with. 